So what di ka? It's a pajama party on Hot Thai Kitchen because that's right, we are making breakfast for the first time on Hot Thai Kitchen history, and we are making none other than the most popular breakfast in Thailand, do or rice porridge, also known as kanji. Now, jok is so popular in Thailand that, in fact, McDonald's Thailand offers it on their breakfast menu. It's called McPorridge, so you can try that out if you want. It's got fried chicken in it, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do the traditional old school one, which is jok mu sap, or jok with chunks of seasoned ground pork. It's very, very good. Now, jok actually takes quite a while to make from start to finish, and I'm sure for breakfast you don't want to be, you know, getting up. An hour early to make it. So as we proceed, I'll talk about what kind of things you can do to get it ready in advance, so that comes breakfast time, it'll be ready for you in 10 minutes. So the first thing we have to prep is the seasoned ground pork, which is the most important part of this dish. So let's look at our ingredients. So we're working with ground pork already, but we're gonna grind it down even further in the food processor because commercially ground pork is quite chunky and coarse. But um, what we want here is for the pork to be ground down to a really, really fine paste so that the fat gets distributed in the pork and it becomes super tender. We're gonna throw in our seasoning, our soy sauce, our fish sauce, a little bit of white pepper. The more the better, as much as you can handle. It's a very white peppery dish. And some sugar. Now this is a little bit more sugar than you might expect, but the pork is gonna have a little bit of sweetness, which is gonna contrast really well with the salty rice that's around it. Trust me, it'll work really, really good. And we're also gonna throw in an ice cube, which is really there to keep everything cold. And the reason, because when you grind things in a food processor, it heats up quite a bit. And if it heats up too much, especially if the pork wasn't straight out of the fridge, it, the fat will start to separate out and then we'll lose all that tenderizing effect. They do the same thing in sausage making. Um, it, for a small amount like this, it's a quick grind, so it's not a big deal. But if you're making more or if it's a hot day, then it's a good precaution to take. So we're gonna grind that up. Now it um, looks very, very appetizing, I know. I'm going to portion this directly into the soup pot. But if you want to make it in advance, you want to portion it into little chunks right now and lay them out in a flat plate and put it in the freezer. And then when, you're, when they're frozen, consolidate them into a bag. And then when you're ready to use, you can just throw them into the pot. But I'm just going to set this aside right now. And now we're going to go and make our rice. So now we're gonna make what I call the rice base for the joke, and we're basically just gonna cook the rice. So I've got here three quarters of a cup of broken rice, which I've washed, and broken rice come in a package like this, just like regular rice, and it is exactly what it sounds like, is rice that's broken into small pieces. And it's good for joke because it cooks faster, and it's also gives a finer texture, but you don't absolutely need it. Um, if you're not gonna make joke often, just use, ah, just use regular rice. You, you just have to cook it a little longer and it might not be as fine of a texture, but it works just as well. Um, if you are going to make dough quite a bit, it's actually cheaper to buy broken rice, so it's a factor to think about. So I've got four cups of water here that I'm going to bring to a boil. And then I'm just gonna go in with our rice. Now in the beginning, you don't have to be stirring as much, Just every once in a while is good. As soon as it comes back to a full boil again, then you can really just let it go because the rice is just kind of dancing around. It's not sitting at the bottom and so it's not gonna burn. Once the rice has thickened up, however, several minutes from now, you want to be here stirring religiously because it's so thick and the starches come out and if you don't stir it, it will burn and stick to the bottom and you don't want that. Okay, yay, now the rice is dancing. The rice is dancing and we're gonna let it go. And you don't wanna walk away at this point because at any moment now it's gonna turn thick. And as soon as it turns thick, that's the critical moment. Okay, so at this point, it's kind of in the middle stage. It's thickened up, but it's still too runny. And also the grains are 
still too intact. They're not mushy enough yet. And you use your judgment and what you're looking for is for the rice to look at a distance like it's a paste, like it's one mass. But upon closer inspection, you can still see the grains, but the grains are not intact anymore. They're kind of semi-solid. So we're gonna keep going. And if you feel like, okay, it's really thick now, but the grains are not broken down as much as you'd like yet, you add a little more water, give it something to work with, and four to five cups of rice is what I find to be the amount needed. And the total amount of time should take you about 30 minutes. If it's a little longer, don't worry, it's fine. So the rice is ready now. As you can see, it's very thick and pasty and it looks from far away like it's a big mass of goodness, but it's, if you look at it closer, you can still see the grains. Now, I'm gonna turn it off so I don't get bubble burns. You can get it more broken down if you wish just keep going and keep stirring or you can have it less broken down if you wish just stop earlier than i did so it's completely up to you the texture of your rice it's kind of a personal thing um, you can make the rice up to this point in advance because from here it's literally going to take you 10 minutes if you've got the pork and everything else ready it's gonna take you 10 minutes to put together and this will keep in the fridge for quite a long time i've had it last me a week um, the only thing is you need to cool it down quickly because a thick paste like this takes a long time to cool. And if you let it sit at a warmish temperature too long, that's a foodborne illness hazard ready to happen. So you want to uh, chill it in a flat wide container and then put it in the fridge as soon as it's cool enough to go in. You don't want to leave it out all day or anything like that. But so now that we've got that ready, there is one more thing we need to do. So the last thing we have to get ready before we put our joke together is the egg. Now it's optional. When you go to buy joke in Thailand, you can tell them either joke sai kai, which is joke with egg, or mayao kai, or you don't want egg. So either way, I really like it. I think it really adds a lot. But it's not just cracking an egg into the bowl. We make what's called kai luok, which is a very, very soft boiled egg. And the way you do that is you get one egg, put it in a bowl, and then you're gonna get off the boil water, which is happening right now. And then you're gonna slow, oh, by the way, the egg is at room temperature. This method works at room temperature eggs. And you're gonna slowly pour the water into the bowl. Now I'm doing this slowly because, one, I want the water to cool off a bit because if it's too hot, the egg will cook a little bit too much and it'll, it won't come out as easily. You'll see what I mean when we go crack it. Second of all, I want the egg to heat up gradually so it won't crack. But if it does, it's really not a big deal. I've done it and it cracked and it's still fine on the inside. And also it, it'll cook more evenly if you do it gradually. And now I'm gonna stop it just when the egg is completely, completely submerged. And you're gonna let it sit for 10 minutes, which means I have to get my timer on. And then at 10 minutes, you're gonna come out and shock it in some cold water. Take it out, dunk it in cold water to stop the cooking, and that's it. And then you just leave it like that, and then when we're ready to serve, we will crack it open, and we'll find out if I did this right. So, it's breakfast time, and you've got everything ready to go. We're gonna put it all together. So I've got here three quarters of a cup of pork stock. Now this is important. Your jok is only as good as your pork stock. No good stock, no good jok, okay? Now lucky for you, I have a tutorial on how to make good homemade pork stock up already. I'll put the link at the end, and you can check it out if you are interested. So we're gonna bring this to a boil. So it's boiling now. Now if you want a more concentrated stock, you can start out with more and then reduce it and get even more flavorful joke. So next is our pork. Remember our pork that we made earlier? I'm just gonna go in and portion it into the dough. You can sit there and make nice rounds if you want, but it's breakfast. It's supposed to look rustic. Okay, that's a little large. That's okay. <laughs> you can make it as big or as small as you want, really. That's all. Ah, let's put in a little bit more. There. Yeah, some people sit there and form them into nice, neat little balls. I don't have time for that for breakfast. Okay, so we're gonna get that pork kind of cooked. And then I'm gonna season this with a teaspoon of soy sauce. 
and then a little bit of salt. You can go all soy sauce if you want, but then that turns your dough a little bit an off-white brownish color. But if you don't mind that and you want soy sauce, that's okay. So I just went in with a quarter teaspoon of salt, and then the pork is sort of halfway done. I'm gonna flip that over. Wow, I made these big. And then I'm gonna go in with my rice base. This is about one cup of my rice base that we just made. Now the ratio is about one, three parts stock to four parts rice, or three parts, no, two parts stock to three parts rice, depending on how thick you like your jok, and also depending on how thick your rice is to begin with. If you cook this from cold, if you keep the rice in the fridge and it's cold, it'll come out a lot thicker. I just finished the rice base, so it's a little bit thinner. So you'll have to, this is where you'll have to gauge how much stock needs to be added. And then you're gonna just break up the rice lumps. Stir it up, ooh, that looks good already. Just making sure that there's no bits of chunks, anything. So the amount of rice that I made earlier is probably good about three, four people, I think. Okay, we're gonna turn this off and then we're gonna go finish it off over there. This is the exciting time. Perfect. This is what you're looking for. This is kai luok. So basically the white has coagulated enough so that it's turned white, but it's still runny and silky, kind of like really loose tofu. And then the heat of the dough will cook it a little bit further. The yolk should be completely runny. If you have overcooked your egg white slightly, it will be stuck to this shell and it won't come out. In which case you just have to run inside with a spoon. There's not a whole lot here, which is good but sometimes if your water was too hot or you left it too long, you have a thick ring of egg whites in the yolk, I mean, in the shell. Okay, perfect, yay. In goes the yolk. Mm. And I'm trying not to completely cover the egg so it looks nice. But if you want the egg to cook further, you can completely smother it with the rice and then the heat will do the rest. Mm. And then we're gonna do garnish with some white pepper. Ooh. And then some green onions. I think I've got some cilantro mixed in here as well. And must have is chopped, finely chopped ginger. Ooh, mmm, it smells good already. So this is classic garnish. Okay, now you might be wondering, well, why didn't I just finish the whole thing and keep it in the fridge and put it in the microwave in the morning? And yes, you can do that. Um, but if you finish it and you add all the pork and everything, it won't last you as long. It'll last you three, four days. But if you keep just the rice base, it'll last you longer because there's no meat or anything in it. Now, as you're halfway through eating, the dough is going to start to thin out. And that's completely normal. It always happens. What's going on is as you put the spoon in your mouth and then in the joke and in your mouth into the joke, the saliva enzymes are going in and breaking down the starch in the porridge. So it's an irreversible process. So you can't keep what's left in the bowl for later unless you don't mind eating, you know, runny dog. So um, take only as much as you can finish. Just a word of warning. All right, let's taste it. Here's the funnest part is breaking the yolk. Yes. Ooh, and then you mix it all up. Make sure I get some pork, some eggs, some ginger, making a perfect bite. Mm. Mm. So comforting. The ginger is a little bit spicy. The white pepper has that hot kick, but it's still overall really comforting food. Now, when you go to Thailand, They'll often have on the table little bottles of Maggie seasoning sauce and people just use that to season it and it works really, really well. So most of the time the joke will come quite mildly seasoned so you can add to your own delight. And that is it. That's our joke. Um, if you want the recipe, you can go to hotthaikitchen.com. If you enjoy the show, please click to subscribe and I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai breakfast.